criteria that's came out. Uh, the state is currently looking into, you know, seeing how we uh, line up with the 40 CFR requirements now, and just trying to analyze our uh, our uh, potential under the Wind Act. So, uh, Kim Walker, uh, uh, program administrator, she has some uh, uh, reorg or organizational changes um, that she wanted to cover. And, uh, Hi everyone. Um, so what I thought I would do is first tell you who I am, where I came from. Because I'm not sure, I haven't had a chance to meet everybody here. So I know a few faces in the room from the Hingley Center meetings, and I went to Dr. Townsend's recent tag, and um, there's some faces in the back of the room that I know from my days in Brownfield. So my name is Kim Walker. I'm the program administrator for Permitting Compliance Assistance Program. So um, for those of you that remember Tim Barr, he got promoted into the assistant director position and I was selected to replace him. So in our program, we have solid waste, we have RICRA, um, compliance for petroleum and um, hazardous waste, and then also registration for tanks and waste, uh, waste oil processors and things like that. Um, so, what we wanted to do was just give you a couple little nuggets like this. I'm going to talk a little bit about our recent reorganization, and then we're going to open it up for questions, and hopefully you guys aren't going to ask us anything that we can't answer. Or anything. <laughs> and if you do, we'll, we'll get back to you. Um, so I think you know that we have a new secretary, Noah Valenstein. Um, reporting directly to the secretary is our deputy secretary of regulatory programs, John Truitt. And under his administration, we're in the Division of Waste. The Division of Waste is led by Joe Yulo, who's the director, and Tim Barr, who's the assistant director. And then under Waste is our program, Petroleum, and Waste Cleanup, those three programs. So we did do some reorganization recently, and some of it's like glad to happy changes, you know, as far as y'all are concerned. Um, you may not notice, but waste reduction wasn't with um, our program for a long time. They are back with us now. So Karen Moore is in our program and her group um, moved with her down there. Um, Fletcher Harold, who you all know and love, um, has moved into a program administrator position and he's doing a lot of finance type stuff for us because he's really good with the numbers. I sent him an email the other day that said, is this something we normally do, and do I have room in my checkbook for it? <laughs> um, let's see, I'm trying to think. Is there oh, the only other thing that I think we wanted to share, just sort of a news item, is there's been an effort for a long time to redo our website. And the website's, um, part of that is to make it ADA compliant. Um, and. It was first going to be rolled out in February. The latest date is now August 4th. We just um, are telling you that it's going to look a lot different. And some of the requirements that we had to adhere to to make it ADA compliant will make it very different. If you can't find something that you need to be able to find, call us. We may not be able to find it either, but we'll know where to go get another copy of it. So with that, I thought we'd open it up for questions. So what are your legislative priorities for this year? We haven't been told yet. Anyone <laughs> <laughs> huh? else? Everybody wants a door for us. Yeah, I, I do have one, uh, one thing I would like to share with you also is uh, for landfills that have uh, been submitting our solid waste uh, quantity report, um, you know, uh, per rule, it's four types of waste, class one, class three, ash, other. Um, so the C and D would be basically uh, combined under the class one or class three. Um, we're putting in a new flow through our SF portal uh, on the recycling side to allow uh, facilities who recycle C and D and dispose of C and D to put their disposal numbers in that SFL. 
So if you're if you're doing the recycling sheet, you can uh, you can provide numbers in that in that acid flow rather than your solid waste flow. So um, there will be a webinar um, set up to uh, discuss that with the with the regulated facilities. And uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to give me a call. I, I don't have a question as much as a comment um, okay. or, or something to take back. And maybe Fletcher, if he's in the finance now, he can look Man, I try, I try getting Fletcher to buy me lunch all the time, and he exactly. never, it never it works. Is, you know? it's, it's <laughs> right. um, do you foresee, uh, you know, one of the challenges sometimes we have is, is getting checks from our clerk of the court for right. uh, <laughs> permit fees? But we can pay them online if there's a, a ability to do that. Do you, the, do you foresee the EP ever going to an online payment portal? <laughs> um, you can actually pay through the portal right now, uh, uh, through the uh, through the portal. But you cannot do a prorated fee through the portal. I mean, if you go for a 20-year permit and it's forty thousand dollars, you're going to going to have to pay that forty thousand dollars upfront. With with your uh, Mastercard Visa, let's say a minor mod for two hundred and fifty dollars. Minor mod two hundred fifty dollars. You can pay through the portal. You can pay through the portal. You yeah, I wasn't aware of that. So that's really and uh, what you what you have to do is just notify the permit processor because the first uh, first thing we're going to do when we see the applicant or request for minor modification come across my desk is it, where's the check? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Um, if you put in your cover letter that uh, the check will be, you know, that you plan to pay through the portal, uh, when that, that uh, permit application is logged into PA, you get that automatic mailer back from the system that says, says your application's been received, uh, uh, you know, we'll be getting back with you about, uh, you know, it's, it's can language on there, but uh, at the bottom of that link there's a, um, there's a pay button, so you, it takes you straight to the as a, as a payment. Excellent. So you should send in send in the application, and then it gets logged in. And then right. We'll send it in with that with that indication on your cover that you're going to be paying through the portal. You know, some way to let us know that that we need to log it in, so we give you the capability to pay. Okay. We got a question here. Great. I had one. Um, Obviously, there's been a lot of interest in the closure turf, alternative cover, and uh, a lot of us have received the, the letter that was issued in terms of, you know, kind of the procedure for going after uh, that process. The way I read it uh, was kind of like if somebody's interested, first send like a letter of interest to the department, and then, you know, if that's approved, go after the alternate procedures. Could you talk well, a little bit on that? What I would recommend, Manny, would be to, um, to just discuss it with with staff, okay. you know, kind of like a pre-application, we can go ahead and, and look at uh, your proposal and then kind of help you structure that alternate procedure. You know, because all procedure, um, you know, it's kind of a, it's a set set thing in our rule. I mean, it goes to our director. It, we log it in. We have to process it, and it's uh, you know, we want to cut out that. I'm oh, sorry, I'm knock down the building, but uh, we want to. You know, take out that uh, you know REI process. You know, we want to make sure we got a good ask to start with, so we can go ahead and get that thing issued. So it's not a, like an initial letter. Hey, we're intending to go after this. More like a conversation with the department to set it up. Yeah, I'll we'll be okay. glad to set up a meeting with you, and um, and just to let you know about my staff. Um, you know, um, some of you are familiar with it. We're kind of divided up into into uh, districts. Um, so certain staff can assign to certain districts. Um, the the catch-all would just be sending me an email, okay. and and I can uh, I can get appropriate staff. Okay. And uh, just to let everybody know, I do have a new um, professional engineer that's in my section, uh, Joe Dertin. He's handling all of my engineering reviews. He's he's kind of like uh, what I was to Richard Tapper. So, so. great guy too. Right. Come on, Carlo. I know you got something. Man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if the microphone comes here. You better answer the question. <laughs> so, how do you feel? Uh, 
Yeah. I feel a lot, Charlie. Yeah, no, 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 no. So Triple X has been put on hold until August. With the uh, state's position. I don't even watch those types of movies, bro. Come on. Come on. You feel strong enough? Do you want to answer the air question or no? Um, wouldn't want to answer an air question, but uh, uh, the people you need to talk with will be uh, Jonathan Holtham or uh, David Reed with uh, DARM. I mean, he is, uh, they're your points of contact. And, you know, being at the landfill permitter, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm caught in there some way, but, uh, you know, um, your air emissions and your top of five, um, you know, that's, that's handled with DARM. Uh, what I'm worried about is, are you poking poking holes in your cover that's leaking and causing other problems? I mean, that's, I want to make sure you adequately control the gas and uh, what what you do with it after that. That's all all Darm's um, cup of tea. So. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming. All right. Okay, 